this is my favorite show. I salute it. Woops. Too much butter on the darn popcorn. This is Domtar Fine Papers in St. Catharines, Ontario. You've probably had their product in your hands at one time or another, especially if you own an Ontario driver's license. The term fine paper differentiates paper manufactured here from cardboard and newsprint. As well as the products you see in this display, this plant also makes the paper that we type, photocopy and write on. The raw material for paper is wood pulp from various species of tree. By the time the pulp arrives here, it's been formed into damp white slabs. The other main ingredient of paper is paper, up to 30% of the total content. The paper industry was a little nervous in the 1970s with the supposed coming of the paperless revolution. But as it turns out, the computer's actually been good for business. This is essentially a big blender. The pulp is being mixed with water to the consistency of loose oatmeal. Recycled paper has to be fed to a separate blender first and is put across shaking screens of various coarseness to remove paper clips, staples, and other non-paper items. This city block long monster is called, what else? A paper machine. Its operation is simple. Pour in wet fiber and paper comes out the other end with a few interesting operations in between. This surface is called the wire. These days it's actually a synthetic fabric. The wire section of the machine is an 80 foot long belt that goes around in a big loop. This is the head box. It squirts watery fibers onto the wire. By the time the fiber reaches the head box, it's been refined so that all of the individual fibers are the same length. They've also been nicked slightly so that they'll lock together more readily. The fiber squirting out of the head box is 99.5% water, and the wire is traveling just a tiny bit faster than the flow from the head box. This is a critical adjustment and is responsible for the thickness and strength of the final paper. As soon as the wet fiber hits the wire, it begins losing water. A system of suction boxes and gravity help draw the water away. The final arrangement of fibers is born on this belt, and this system is why paper has two slightly different sides, the wire side and the top side. The edge of the flow is trimmed by a small jet of water. The leftover portion is collected and fed back into the system. By the time it reaches the end of the wire, the fragile mush is still mostly water. A roller at the end of the wire gives a gentle squeeze. Immediately following this squeeze, the paper is still about 80% water. As a testament to how well the fibers interlock, the wet blanket is now strong enough to be removed from the wire and transferred to another belt. The second belt is a felt material. In conjunction with rubber rollers and pressure, the felt removes more water from the paper. This is starch being applied to the surface. This not only makes the paper look and feel nice, it will prevent ink from penetrating too deeply. 
Depending on the type of paper being made, various coatings might be applied. These rollers are steam heated dryers. This is the back side of the dryers. This unit constantly monitors the thickness of the moving paper using a small radioactive source, much like a home smoke alarm. Just about every parameter is constantly monitored by a computer and fine adjustments are made. Imagine the difficulty of getting this machine up and running with wet mush pouring in at one end and dry paper coming out the other. Paper making is a continuous process, and you can't just stop it when the roll at the end is full. No problem, you just need one of these rigs. If at all possible, the paper machine is never stopped, even when the paper breaks. There's a definite art to re-threading the machine while it's running. At first, this seems like a terrible waste of paper until you realize that the spoiled paper is simply fed back to the start of the process. Spoiled paper is called broke. Because this plant makes fine papers, the various grades and colors have to be stored until that particular paper is being made again. In lesser grade paper making, this stuff might be just thrown together. This paper machine has an extra roller installed so that it presses against the river of water and fiber on the wire. This is where the term watermark comes from. Most customers order their paper in large rolls for further processing. In the case of french fry bags and soft drink cups, further coatings will be applied by the customer. Other orders are cut and packaged right at the site. The three paper machines at the St. Catharines plant turn out over 60,000 tons of paper a year. We'll let you figure out how many sheets that is.